Back when cars were born from passion, not marketing plans, a few automakers quietly broke the mold. They weren't chasing mass appeal, they were chasing innovation. And between the 1960s and 1980s, some of the most brilliantly engineered cars rolled off production lines with barely a spotlight. We're talking about rotary engines, lightweight fiberglass builds, rally-winning V4s, and hatchbacks that flipped the family car formula. These weren't flukes, they were blueprints for the future, just buried under louder, flashier names. So it's time to pull them out of the shadows and give them the recognition they earned. Let's take a look at five of the most well-engineered cars of the 1960s to 1980s you've never heard of. Five, NSU Row 80 from 1967 to 1977. The NSU Row 80 wasn't a mainstream hit, but it absolutely shook the car industry in 1967. Built by NSU Motor Inverka AG, best known at the time for small cars and motorcycles, this sedan came out of nowhere and dropped design and tech ideas that many major automakers wouldn't dare touch until decades later. From the moment it launched, the Row 80 looked like it came from the future. It had a sharp-edged, low-drag body designed in a wind tunnel, a first for a production sedan. It sliced through air with a drag coefficient of just 0.35, which was unheard of for a family car in the late 60s. That wasn't styling, that was engineering. Under the hood sat the boldest gamble of all, a 995 cubic centimeter twin-rotor Wankel engine. Lightweight, compact, and capable of revving high, the rotary engine engine gave the Row 80 its smooth, quiet performance. No pistons, no cylinders, just two rotors spinning in a figure eight housing. It made around 113 horsepower, sent power to the front wheels, and paired with a three-speed semi-automatic transmission that used a vacuum-operated clutch. The driving experience was bizarre, but comfortable, quiet, and unusually responsive for a large sedan. It won European Car of the Year in 1968, becoming the first German car to take that title. Designers and engineers across Europe praised its innovation, but the car had one massive issue, durability. The Wankel engine wore out quickly, sometimes failing under 30,000 miles, which destroyed its reputation and drained NSU's finances. The car was technically brilliant but unreliable in daily use, and warranty costs crippled the company. Eventually, Volkswagen absorbed NSU, folding it into the Audi brand. Despite its commercial struggles, the Row 80 influenced generations of vehicle design. Audi's aerodynamic sedan language of the 80s traces directly back to this car. Mazda eventually picked up the Wankel torque perfecting it in their RX series. But none of that would have happened without NSU daring to build something this radical. And while NSU was building the car of tomorrow, Chrysler was busy blending brute speed with tailored suits. And it worked beautifully. Let's talk about the 300F. 4. Chrysler 300F 1960 The Chrysler 300F was built for a very specific kind of customer, someone who wanted to go 140 miles per hour on Sunday and park next to a Cadillac on Monday. It was the sixth installment in Chrysler's 300 letter series, a high-performance luxury lineup that started in 1955 and peaked, in many eyes, with the 1960 model. What made the 300F different from its predecessors was how much engineering went into pushing the performance envelope while still keeping it dressed like a country club executive. Power came from a 413 cubic inch Golden Lion V8 with a unique cross-ram intake setup. Instead of mounting the carburetors right on top of the engine, Chrysler's engineers split them into long, horizontal tubes that ran across the top of the engine bay. This design design optimized torque in the mid-range and delivered 375 horsepower with ridiculous pull at highway speeds. Some dealer prepped cars with special cams and tuning were hitting 145 miles per hour in Daytona flying mile trials. These weren't stripped down racers, they were full-sized, air-conditioned land yachts. Inside, it was pure jet age ambition. Four individual bucket seats, a full-length center console, push-button transmission controls, and a dashboard with dials that looked like they came from an airplane. The torsion bar front suspension gave it tighter handling than you'd expect from a nearly 4,300-pound machine, and the exhaust note was as refined as it was thunderous. The 300F sat at an awkward crossroads, too luxurious to be a muscle car, too powerful to be a cruiser. But for a brief moment in 1960, Chrysler made a car that nailed both. It didn't sell in huge numbers, just under 1,300 units were made, but it became a cult favorite and still turns heads at vintage racing events and collector shows today. Now, let's head to Italy, where Lancia was crafting a different kind of brilliance, one corner at a time. 3. Lancia Fulvia from 1963 to 1976 
The Lancia Fulvia was never meant to be loud or flashy, but it ended up becoming one of the most respected rally machines of its time. It debuted at the 1963 Geneva Motor Show as a stylish compact saloon called the Berlina, but that was just the beginning. Lancia quickly followed up with a sportier coupe and a lightweight Zagato-bodied variant aimed squarely at enthusiasts. Each version was built with precision, with subtle design differences hiding a level of mechanical sophistication that was rare even in high-end sports cars. What made the Fulvia mechanically special was its unique unique narrow-angle V4 engine. It was mounted longitudinally and powered the front wheels, a combination almost no one else was doing at the time. The narrow V-angle allowed for a single cylinder head, reducing weight and improving efficiency. Displacements ranged from 1.1 to 1.6 liters across the lineup, and power outputs grew over the years, with later models producing up to 132 horsepower in rally trim. That might not sound huge today, but in a car weighing just over 850 kilograms, it was more than enough. The Fulvia also used a fully independent suspension, and a rigid monocoque chassis, offering sharp handling that gave it a competitive edge on twisty rally stages. The high-performance HF models, short for high fidelity, were tuned for racing and dominated the international rally scene. In 1972, the Fulvia 1.6 HF won the Monte Carlo Rally outright, beating out more powerful rear-wheel drive rivals in snowy, treacherous conditions. That victory helped Lancia secure the international championship for manufacturers, the forerunner to the WRC. Today, the Fulvia Fulvia remains a cornerstone of Lancia's racing legacy and a favorite within the Stellantis Heritage Collection. It's a symbol of what happens when precision engineering meets practical design. Compact, durable, and agile, the Fulvia punched well above its weight both in garages and on gravel. Next, we head to France, where Renault pulled off something no one expected. They made a hatchback that was both practical and revolutionary. 2. Renault 16 From 1965 to 1980 When the Renault 16 launched in 1965, it looked modest, almost plain. But under that boxy exterior was one of the smartest designs of its time. This wasn't just a good idea executed well, it was a rethinking of what a family car could be. Renault didn't copy what was already out there. They built something that didn't really exist yet. A five-door car with the flexibility of a wagon, the comfort of a sedan, and the ride quality of a luxury saloon. It was the first truly successful midsize hatchback, and it changed how cars were laid out. Its engineering was unconventional. The R16 used a front-wheel drive layout with the engine mounted longitudinally behind the front axle and the gearbox placed in front of it. This allowed for better weight distribution and made room for a spacious cabin. The car also had a column-shifted transmission, independent suspension, and an off-centered torsion bar set up in the rear to maximize interior space without compromising the ride. You could fold or remove the rear seats in multiple ways, giving it the kind of flexibility that would later define minivans and crossovers. The car remained in production for 15 years and sold over 1.8 million units. It directly influenced the design of future hatchbacks like the Volkswagen Golf and inspired crossover concepts decades before they became industry standard. Its impact is everywhere now, even if its name has faded from conversation. And now, let's pivot to a different kind of brilliance, one that proved weight, balance, and driver feel mattered more than raw power. Time to look at the Lotus Elan. 1. Lotus Elan from 1962 to 1995 The original Lotus Elan introduced in 1962 was built with a singular goal, make the lightest, sharpest handling road car money could buy. And Lotus delivered. The car weighed around 640 kilograms thanks to a minimalist steel backbone chassis and a fiberglass body. Under the hood, it packed a twin cam inline four engine developed from Ford's Kent block, but reworked by Lotus to produce anywhere from 90 to 126 horsepower depending on the trim. That might sound modest, but the Elan's power to weight ratio made it a precision tool on twisty roads. Few cars at the time could change direction with such ease as the Lotus Elan, and the feedback through the steering wheel became the benchmark for decades and when Mazda designed the MX-5 Miata in 1989, their engineers bought Elans and studied them to capture that same magic. Then came the M100 Elan in 1989. This one was different. It had a new chassis, modern styling, and controversially, front-wheel drive, powered by an Isuzu-built 1.6-liter DOHC turbo engine making 162 horsepower. The M100 offered impressive grip and speed, but many purists didn't love the drivetrain layout. Still, it had its own engineering merit. Lotus tuned the suspension to near perfection, and it handled more like an all-wheel drive car than anything front-driven. It was quick, balanced, and built to perform, even if it didn't match the original's purity. Over the years, both generations of the Elan gained a cult following. The originals became restoration darlings, with owners across the UK and US rebuilding them from the ground up. The M100, once overlooked, is now climbing in value among collectors. One Elan even found a second life as a jacuzzi rental on Airbnb, complete with water jets and a working steering wheel. Because, of course, 
someone did that. And with that, we wrap up our drive through five brilliantly engineered classics. So which of these forgotten legends would you want to take for a spin? Maybe the rotary-powered Row 80 or that rally-ready Lancia Fulvia? Drop your pick in the comments. And hey, if you enjoyed this ride through some of the smartest cars you've never heard of, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into underrated engineering marvels. Until next time, drive safe.